Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a book review of Call Sign Chaos by General Jim Mattis. This is the first book review in what will probably become a playlist of book reviews for the Commandant Marine Corps reading list. I am in my third year of law school. Uh, for those of you who've been following my channel, you know this. I've done book reviews for a very long time. Uh, basically, since I started the channel, I love reading. And the Commandant Marine Corps reading list is a reading list that the like, highest position in the Marine Corps publishes every year. Um, and it's a way for Marines to stay uh, educated, to stay on top of uh, continual learning, right? And so there's different subjects within the, the reading list. There's warfare, there's leadership, there's history, right? Um, just uh, technology, different areas. So we want Marines to be widely read. Um, and so this is kind of like a list of, and then the list also gets more specific based off of uh, rank, um, you know, whether you are an officer or enlisted, and just having a shared belief and shared education and shared understanding of the world. Um, and so, yeah, this is going to be the first in this playlist. I'm really excited. This playlist will probably just be hopefully forever expansive because I am in the process of applying to the Marine Corps. So this will probably be the first time that I even disclose that on this YouTube channel. And I haven't done a book review in a very long time, but I'm excited that this is going to be something that we can, you know, just continually do over hopefully uh, the course of a career in the Marine Corps, if I'm lucky enough to get accepted. Um, it is January 11th, or I don't even know what it is right now, January 11th, I believe, and I sit for the board March 20th. So there's some time, and I'm trying to read as many books on the Commandant Marine Corps reading list uh, before that time. And so I'm going to get started. Uh, I decided to pick up this book. Uh, General Mattis, a pretty well-known, uh, you know, just public leader and figure. Some people may know him as like, uh, I think one of his nicknames is General uh, Something Dog Mattis. Wild Dog Mattis or something like that. But I have learned that he does not actually like this name. The reason he doesn't like this name is he thinks it kind of creates a, a bad image um, as a, you know, a leader in the Marines, he prefers a different nickname that was given to him by his subordinates, right? And that is chaos. And it's kind of a funny story. He tells it within this book and chaos stands for Colonel has another outstanding suggestion. And so this was an acronym that was used by some of his you know, subordinates who were trying to, I guess I, he walked into a room one day and they had it written in big capital letters on the board. So kind of a funny story and also just kind of gives you a sense of um, who he is and his willingness to like adopt this for himself. He has said in interviews he actually prefers chaos as a nickname as before to um, the something dog. I don't really even know that nickname too well, but I want to get into this book, right? And I decided to pick up this book kind of to start just because uh, I do have such a high opinion of General Mattis. And I'm really glad that this was the first, you know, Marine Commandant reading list book that I have picked up. I learned a, a tremendous amount. I think this book is useful for leaders of all industries, right? You don't just have to be interested in the military for this book to be extremely useful to you. If you are an executive leader, uh, you know, a leader within your own community, political leader, there's a lot to be learned about, you know, excuse me, the successful military career of General Mattis. It goes all the way up to a, a four-star general. So he can, has a lot of wisdom to share, um, has been in many positions, you know, commander of a Marine division, all the way up to, I believe, Central Command. You have, I, a lot of these acronyms are new to me, so I am very sorry. I'm learning a lot of the, the history and terminology and acronyms, and there's a lot in the military. Um, but CENTCOM, Central Command, I believe he uh, headed that for a while, was also like one of the main representatives of NATO, um, and also served as an advisor to President Trump. So he has had a lot of leadership experience, right? And so you can learn a tremendous amount. And I just want to get started, um, talk about a couple things in the book. 
One of the, the first things is leadership fundamentals. Uh, he talks about this very early on in the book. And I just want to highlight, he refers to them as the three C's. And he says that these are the fundamentals of being a leader are competence, caring, and conviction. And we can just think about these very briefly. Obviously, you, you need to be competent. You need to know what you're doing. You need to be able to lead other people, uh, teach other people, uh, know what you're doing, be confident in what you're doing. Um, the next one is caring. I thought this was you know, interesting, uh, not something that you might think would be something a four-star general would be saying is important to have as a leadership characteristic, but we'll talk a little bit more later about you know, what that caring looks like, what it means in you know, the teachings and learnings of General Mattis to be a caring leader, right? Um, and you also need to have uh, conviction. Because obviously, if you are leading troops into war, if you're leading a big company, if you're leading your local high school chess team, whatever it may be, you need people to feel like you know what you're doing and have conviction in not only your plan, but yourself and your abilities and your team's abilities, right? And that's kind of one of the themes of this book is this idea of decentralized uh, control, right? He believes that you have to give people responsibility. You have to and trust that they will you know, follow the orders. Um, and he also talks about how you can convey your orders, right? And he talks about commander's intent, um, intent being something that's very important whenever you're sharing sort of the plan for people, um, that they understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, because things can go awry. And so they need to be able to maneuver and execute on your in intent, even if there are diversions in the course of the plan. Um, so I, I thought that was really interesting. Oh, and this idea of decentralized leadership is really like just trusting people, um, not being overbearing, being able to delegate, finding people who are competent. He talks about aggression. I thought this was really interesting as being like a, a quality of not only a good Marine, but um, also, in his opinion, just a good leader. Like you have to be someone who is uh, aggressive. You have to be someone who is, I forgot what the other uh, adjective he used was. Um, but essentially a go-getter, like someone who, because mistakes will be made and you can't punish people for making mistakes, but uh, initiative, that's what he said. Someone who takes initiative, right? Um, he, he believes that these are two very important qualities, right? And Something else that was a theme in this book, and you get this on page 42, is reading. General Mattis is a big believer in reading, um, the importance of learning from the past, uh, you know, picking up um, books of people who are, have been test, the test of time, right? If you're reading a book from someone, uh, it's probably someone who's had a lot of experience. If it's an older book, and it's a book that you're reading today that's, you know, it's obviously sort of like past the test of time, if you will. He talks a lot about Marcus Aurelius, quotes a lot from Marcus Aurelius throughout the book. Definitely the Stoic uh, philosophers have been, I believe he even quotes from Epictetus. So these are philosophers of ancient Greek and they have had tremendous impact on him. Um, and so he says, read the ancient Greeks and how they turned out their warriors. Reading is an honor and a gift from a warrior or historian who, a decade or a thousand decades ago, set aside time to write. Uh, if you haven't read hundreds of books, you are functionally illiterate and you will be incompetent because your personal experiences alone aren't broad enough to sustain you. Any commander who claims he is too busy to read is going to fill body bags with troops as he learns the hard way. The consequences of incompetence in battle are final. Um, you know, he talks about the reading list. By ranks, reading sheds light on the dark path ahead. By traveling into the past, I enhance my grasp of the present. And then also on page 237, we find another quote about reading. If you haven't read hundreds of books, learning from others who went before you, you are functionally illiterate. You can't coach, you can't lead. History lights the often dark path ahead. Even if it's a dim light, it's better than none. 
So I just thought that was a really important takeaway, um, you know, the importance of reading. And obviously that's what we're doing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, subscribe to this playlist, because there'll be more to come. And just, you know, we can learn together. Engage with me in the comments. That's the reason I do this. I like to learn from others, I like to hear their thoughts. People who are reading this book are probably the people who are watching this video. So um, another uh, big learning from this book came on page 90, right? And I don't know how you pronounce this. Maybe you say Oda. Maybe some people might say Uda loop. I, it's important to talk about because I, I thought it was something he brings up again and again throughout the book. And the Uda loop is something that one needs to execute in order to be successful. And the loop consists of observing, orienting, deciding, and acting. And this is a loop that Jim, uh, General Mattis learned from um, Air Force Colonel John Boyd about how to win a dog fight. Uh, a dog fight is when two airplanes are fighting each other. And so this is something that impacted General Mattis and he used throughout his career, the OODA loop. And it, so essentially what you wanna do is you need to observe, orient yourself, decide and act and you have to repeat that loop over and over again and you need to do it quicker than your opponent if you want to win um, so pick up the book if you want to learn a little bit more about that but i thought it was worth noting then some interesting conversations on leadership uh the leadership is just a, a theme throughout this book but on pages 144 through 146 uh, i he, he's talking very much about leading young warriors right marines are the elite war class um, young men and women who decide to serve their country and, and pick up arms to protect us. Um, and anyone who's obviously willing to sign up to go into war, you know, all Marines are infantrymen or riflemen, right? So you are someone who has that fighting spirit in you, to say the least. And so nothing is more important to me than maintaining the fighting spirit of our troops and their confidence in their leaders on the battlefield. I think this applies within uh, the business context as well, if you can, you know, just orient it in that way. You, he's talking about the young troops. You can't fool the troops. Our young men, our young men had to harden their hearts to kill proficiently without allowing indifference to non-combatant suffering to form a callus on their souls. I had to understand the light and dark competing in their hearts because needed because we needed lads who could grim, violent work without becoming evil in the process. Lads who could do harsh things yet not lose their humanity. Be polite, be professional, but have a plan to kill everyone you meet. This is on page 145. Were the troops comfortable? This is how he could tell if troops were, um, if he had their hearts, right? Because he talks about you have to ha have the troops' hearts in order to win. Were the troops comfortable speaking in my presence? Did they nudge one another in appreciation of a wise crack or incorrect remark? Did they feel at ease with their immediate superiors? It was refreshing to listen to a gunnery sergeant or lieutenant verbally spar with his men in a casual but respectful manner that reflected mutual fondness. That told me the lads' hearts were still in the game. And he's talking about being in the middle of war, right? Um, Building trust and affection in units is not the same as chasing popularity, which relies on favoritism, nor does it replace the priority of accomplishing the mission. For this reason, I came down hard on anyone who said, well, I'll just leave it at that. Um, and there is another good quote on page 240 that I thought was worth commenting on. Resourceful leaders do not lose touch with their troops. A leader's job is to inculcate high-spirited, I don't even know this word, amiable self-discipline. Leaders must always generate options by surrounding themselves with bright subordinates and being catalysts for new ideas. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Critical to the command and feedback approach is the speed of information sharing and decentralizing decision-making. So we talked about that earlier. And... This video is already getting a little bit long, but I did want to talk about a couple of other things from the book that really stood out to me in particular. And I think they kind of um, speak towards General Mattis as a leader. Um, the first one was on page 224, right? And, and briefly speaking, uh, I'm gonna give you the quote and then I'll give the backstory. The quote is, your highness, I finally interrupted. My loyalty is absolute to my country and my commander in chief, President Obama. I will not agree by silence when, you, when they are criticized. 
And so essentially what's happening in this section of the, the book is the idea of you do not criticize your commander through silence whenever an, an opposing party is criticizing your commander, right? So I won't get into all the details, but you get the sense that even if you disagree with your commander or your, your leader, you do not criticize them, especially to an opposing party, right? You stand by them, and that's that loyalty test. Um, so I thought that was extremely uh, powerful. Um, on page 152, had another good moment um, I wanted to talk about. This one, I won't get into all the details of it, but essentially, he, General Mattis is asked in an interview um, a question about war, and he gives it an answer um, that some might consider flippant, but it wasn't flippant, right? And it was, um, he, he says, you go into Afghanistan, you got guys who slap women around for five years because they didn't wear a veil. I said, you know, guys like that ain't got no manhood left anyways, so it's a hell of a lot of fun to shoot them. Actually, it's quite fun to fight them, you know, hell of a hoot. It's fun to shoot some people. I'll be right up there with you. I like brawling. So that was his quote, right? It's in the book. So I'm not trying to be, uh, he, he's clearly comfortable sharing this. Um, but what I liked about this whole interaction was like, it's just him being just honest truth in like saying what's on his mind. And, um, you know, he got a little bit of public backlash for these comments, but, you know, he took it in stride and, and his, his commanders and the people who were above him, it was something that he got slapped on the wrist for, but uh, some people respected it. You know, the fact that he speaks what's on his mind and, and says how he feels. Um, and so I, I thought that that was a, a powerful takeaway. And then this was my favorite moment in the book. And so... General Mattis at this time, I believe he is the commander of the 1st Marine Division, um, and they are in Fallujah, I believe. Um, they're in Afghanistan, and he's meeting with, he's meeting with a gentleman named Janabi, who had, who's trying to come into power as like sort of a moderate leader um, there in Afghanistan, and before he takes the meeting, right? He's the head dog. So, I mean, he's, you know, you kill him, that's, you're killing the general, right? And he takes a meeting deep into the city where he meets with the opposing party. And the intelligence um, that, that they had done before the meeting suggested that they were gonna try to kill uh, General Mattis. But, you know, what I liked about this part of the book was General Mattis still takes the meeting you know, he's talking about like when he, he gets there, he's got his rifle in his lap and he's got it pointed at the person he has the meeting with. And his last comment to one of his you know, people who accompany him is like, if it turns into a dogfight in this meeting, like I got, I got this guy and you got these guys, right? And this, this is all detailed in the, in the book. Um, but I think my favorite quote is they're, they're having this meeting and he says, um, you know, the gentleman says to, to General Mattis, do I look like a terrorist? I cocked my head, halfway smiling, examined him closely. Why, as a matter of fact, you do, I said. And from reading your sermons, you sound like one too. And I was just like, man, just with all the tension in that moment, you know, to still have the gumption to look a man in his eyes who wants you dead, um, knowing that, you know, the intelligence beforehand suggested that they were going to try to kill you, still take the meeting, go in there. I mean, it just talks uh, about, you know, the bravery that he, he must have had in that moment. And to speak, you know, so candidly and openly face to face is, is just a very powerful thing. And so highly recommend this book um, for anyone who's thinking about joining the Marines, especially. Uh, I think General Mattis is kind of one of those guys who's going to go down in Marine history. And honestly, anyone who's just interested in leadership or interested in the military in general, I think there's a lot to gain from this book. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Comment your thoughts. If you've read the book, I love hearing from you guys in the comments. That's my favorite part. So see you in the next one. Peace.